happening to USA Today. Every single one. You see them there, all run by Democrats and have been for decades. Now, St. Louis hasn't seen a Republican mayor in 70 years. It's been 60 years in Detroit. And joining me now to discuss Candace Owens, founder of the Blexit Movement, and Monique Presley, attorney and Democrat strategist. All right, Candace, uh, to me, the president has more courage um, than most people in calling out this ongoing decline of some of these great cities. I love, I love Baltimore. I spent so much time there over the years, but it's tough. It's a really, really tough place, and the residents speak volumes. Um, Sharpton comes in today and says, I'm here to defend, and I'm here to stand with the people of Baltimore. What of that? Well, Al Sharpton is first and foremost a fraud. Uh, he's a liar and he's a race hustler. So in order for Al Sharpton to stay in business, uh, he has to keep selling this narrative that racism exists. And that's just what the NAACP is. That is how they secure their bottom line. If Al Sharpton really cared about the advancement of black Americans, he would be saying that what the president said is correct. It's factual. This is not something that needs to be whether you're left or right. Common sense. Talk to the people and the residents that live in Baltimore. They will tell you what they are living with. This is exactly why we, I have created the Blexit movement, because we are not being served by the politicians in any of the major cities that Democrats are running. And the kids are the ones that are suffering first and foremost. 2017 report, 13 high schools in Baltimore couldn't find a single black child that was proficient in reading and math. Why is Al Sharpton standing against the president on this? Uh, Monique, I talked to um, Catherine Pugh, the former mayor of Baltimore, when she was still the mayor. I guess it was last, last year, and I asked her about what's going on in the schools here. And she almost kind of denied that there was even a problem with the budget or what was happening. And it, and it was all kind of obfuscation. I tried to get her to focus on it, but she didn't really want to engage on it. So. As I said earlier, whatever you think of President Trump, this is a beyond a crisis in America. So you talk about the crisis at the border. We got a crisis in 45 minutes from here. Your thoughts tonight? Um, we're in two and a half years of this president's administration, and there were promises made to people of color, right? There were promises made to African Americans. What do we have to lose? Well, apparently, since there's been this ongoing crisis in Baltimore that the president just recognized yesterday, we've been losing time. What I think, first, is that he was factually incorrect. Baltimore is not the most dangerous crime-ridden city in the United Third States. Most. So that means he's incorrect. Okay, so give what him I a think, medal for that. What I think, second, is it's not all of uh, Representative Cummings district, right? It's half of Baltimore that is part of a much larger district, which happens to be above median income of all of the cities in the United yeah, States. Baltimore as a whole and, is not above median income. It's $7,000 no, less. No, not Baltimore, his district. Remember, the president was tweeting about his district. He okay, so you're, you're satisfied Baltimore with the situation. District. It's not about being satisfied. It's about you're, you're splitting hairs about it, it, the district. Being, yes. It's about being okay. accurate. Okay. Right. Third, here's the third this thing. Me so much. Hire people yeah. with education more educated people coming out of that district so are you okay and the rest i just want to understand have anything to for do 16 okay. years of democrat no, hold so on much. hold on Candace. So 16 much. years we had mm -hmm. eight years of the first african-american president yes. we had eight years of bill clinton who they called the first african-american yes. president we have trump in there for two years we have the envy of the world and the economy yes. he's looking at these inner cities i think he's impatient maybe as much as you are for change there and maybe you don't like the way he says it but I'm telling you, he's telling African Americans, guess what? Stick with us. We got to turn this thing around because well, it's unfair. Well, absolutely. And I think he cares least, about it. I really do. Tells, I don't at least like he tells the, the truth. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Okay, I'm sorry just, because I, I'm talking back at you. But, but, I, but, I, <laughs> but I think, Candace, look, the, the tweets bother people. The way you say it bothers people. And I'm, I'm going to say that some people take it to heart. OK, they think, look, he does. He's criticizing Elijah Cummings. He's an African-American congressman. He's respected in many circles. Could you send a different type of tweet? Could you send a different type of message? Is that part of the problem? Here? No, it's not. Because we've seen people do that in the past. We've seen Republicans kowtow to the Democrats. Every time the, that they turn around and they say somebody's a racist, they cower. It needs to be Trump. It needs to be said. It bothers me deeply. I spoke to you in the green, green room. You're nice. You're intelligent. Do not defend Baltimore as a city. Don't do that to black America. Don't pretend that being in third place in terms of being in all of the cities somehow makes Trump, Trump a liar. They're leading in homicides. They're leading 
leading in rape. They are leading in sexual assault. Black Americans are suffering in this city. Because you don't like Trump, you're going to split hairs and pretend this is somehow okay because they're ranked third. We deserve better than that as a community. We deserve Trump. We deserve someone who has the courage to say to black America, you have nothing to lose because you're already losing. And it's true. You know we're losing. This is not left or right, Democrat or Republican. This is about black Americans getting off of our feet and admitting that okay. something well, is Monique, really answer. wrong. Okay, right. So it's not because I don't like Trump. It's because I'm not untethered to the facts like he is and apparently like those who don't mind defending him even when he's wrong. It's really not that hard to say that someone is wrong. When you say that no one would want to live in an entire city That's a and it's wrong device, obviously. and it's I insulting it yeah. and it's not factual. I have family from Baltimore so I actually care about what happens to the people there. And then when you say here are all the things that are right. wrong but don't talk about our country because if you talk about our country then you need to go back somewhere. But I'm going to talk about what's wrong and I'm not even going to introduce some yeah. way to help. What you don't do is criticize people who actually are getting up every day and working on it and not introduce yeah. a way to get it fixed. The last I didn't mayors mind had to him. step down from fraud. I'm sorry. In, in that I'm, I'm, in, in okay. I'm okay. still okay. mid-sentence. Okay. Okay. I didn't mind him criticizing Representative Cummings because he's a grown man. He's a powerful man. He can okay. handle himself. What I minded was insulting all of the people who live insulted. in Baltimore. He didn't insult them. He told them the truth. People by saying that the truth it's is not the a truth. Place. Well, how many? I think, think there insulting. are a lot of. I think there are a lot of people actually. I think there are a lot of white well. liberals and Republicans who live in Baltimore. Yeah, but, but actually, that are insulted. Right, but, who are not insulted? They're, because you know why? Because liberals are okay, no, 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 Who live in Baltimore? Yes, there are. Who work at Johns Hopkins and at Kennedy Schlieger and live in Ellicott City and love the harbor. What I was going to say, guys, is that I think there are a lot of liberals and conservatives who would not want to live in Baltimore in the places where these folks are living. Guilty and that's charged. that's the truth. And there's nothing wrong with that. It's not like saying that. Perhaps you talk to so, Republican Governor Hogan about that. Well, and Republican, we talked, and we talked to the president about I that. Don't, because the I, president and is I more think, powerful than anyone. Right, but I think, and I think for for what what maybe could happen out of this is if Cummings and these guys put aside 2020 for five minutes and sat and said, you know, what worked in New York. When you turn New York around, what worked and what didn't work? Let's look at it. Republican leadership. Just look at it. Works. Put it on a piece of paper. Democrat say, leadership this never work. works. That's but I'm just answer. saying, does some policies work? Some policies don't. And take it Gosh, away from I wouldn't politics. even be able to vote if that was the case. But you know what I'm saying? But, like okay. I think you could actually. I'm happy with that conclusion. I think you could actually come up with a, five things that worked and five things that didn't. Take Republican Democrat off the sheet. I, agree. I think that could actually yes. happen. It's really hard when you, when you cry racism. It shuts the conversation down. And it's even harder when there is racism. And, the, and there isn't any. That, that shuts lives down. So fortunately, right. we have a president that isn't racist and is not afraid to stand up when people baselessly call him racist. And he's willing to point out all the flaws that are happening right now. And unfortunately, Democrat leadership in inner cities okay. is destroying black America. All right, guys, we got to go. Thank you very much for being here. We will have a spirited conversation on the show always. All right.